from the syllabus copy the first chapter as well as the second chapter now uh, the fourth and the fifth chapter has been completed by sir kitu sir and then the third unit part of it half part of it will be completed by ganesh sir and the remaining half will be completed by me and the portion for that is right in front of uh, you in the on the uh, presentation board so uh, if you see the unit number 3 contains uh, the following things one is casting design the other one is special molding processes uh, uh, and melting furnaces so coming to the casting design Uh, this part will be completed by ganesh sir who uh, he is already taken or he is taking the classes so you have to refer to his videos for that for that part while the special molding processes and the melting furnaces i will be completing in this two weeks of time coming to the special molding processes we need to cover six types of special molding uh, processes or special molding uh, techniques they are uh, shell molding investment casting or investment molding centrifugal casting continuous casting gravity die casting and pressure die casting we will go uh, deep into all these techniques and then there is something called as the melting furnaces and in melting furnaces we have to see basically about the working of induction furnaces its classification and constructional features so these are the things we need to cover uh, in this uh, uh, my part uh, if you see in the unit number 3 uh, i think you have uh, seen this uh, uh, presentation so i will go ahead with the next part so uh, before going to the next part that is the special molding processes the special molding processes this one these are the special molding processes we should be knowing or we should be understanding that why w- what is the need for going for this special kind of molding techniques while till now we have been de- uh, discussing only about the sand casting techniques but why what is making us to go for this special molding technique is what we should be knowing and then we should be going ahead with this different type of uh, special molding techniques so if you see the sand techniques are uh, studied so far however uh, it has uh, enormous amount of wide applications low cost and give satisfactory results however some of the limitations what are being uh, associated with sand molding are written on the slide the first one is that sand molds are of single use and gets destroyed after metal pouring so if you see a sand casting will be generally made for only one or one or few number of pieces of castings to be produced once that number of castings production is being achieved the whole sand casting is being destroyed so that is the first limitation of a sand casting process the second limitation is that the uh, a sand casting process will not give you a good surface finish and dimensional accuracy because the sand grains are very much bigger that in turn will be reflected on the metal casting surface or in other words you can say that uh, casting which is produced of, uh, due to sand uh, casting technique root will have bad surface finish and inaccurate dimensional accuracies so this is the second limitation of sand casting the further if you see sand casting uh, we are not or cannot be used for producing very intricate structured or shaped castings so these are the three important limitations of sand casting uh, technique also the one more technique one more disadvantage or drawback of sand casting technique is that it results in lower production quantity that means if you want to produce uh, thousands or 1500 or around 10000 or 15000 of uh, pieces of products by sand casting technique it will be a very much difficult task so if you want to produce any small number of uh, small quantity of uh, uh, castings you should go for sand casting techniques so with this limitations of sand casting i want to create a background or a basic uh, uh, a foundation in front of you that why we are going for the special molding techniques so these are the reasons why we are going for the special molding techniques special molding techniques so this is what is being written on the board if you see the first one is that uh, sand casting technique uh, have been studied uh, have been studied and shows wide applications and has low Uh, cost and gives satisfactory results however sand molds are only used for single use once you, you make use of it to make the castings after that you need to destroy or discard that sand casting then the castings do not produce products with good surface finish and good uh, dimensional accuracies a very intricate shapes are very difficult to produce using this sand casting technique and you uh, can produce only small quantity of products out of sand casting so with this limitations uh, it creates a atmosphere that we should go for special molding techniques so that is the reason what i have been stated here that these points explain the need for special molding processes so what we'll do is that we'll go ahead with the first type of uh, special molding technique called as a shell molding process shell 
molding process. So uh, this uh, shell molding process is also called as corning process or C process. It is also called as corning process. The first point on the slide you can see it is called as corning process or C technique or C process also. Basically this shell molding technique is being used to create thin shells of metal or other example or other way if I want to state you if you want to create a thin section of metal on metallic surface you should go for shell molding technique. Uh, an example in the real world would be your uh, a cylindrical a cylinder which is used in the uh, IC engine. It spins the fins of a cylinder wherein heat is being radiated out of the cylinder. Such kind of thin sections if you want to produce you should make use of this special molding technique called as the shell molding technique. Uh, okay and uh, I have written on the slide that very thin sections of surface details of 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 mm. You can imagine that thin section if you want to produce you can take the use of this type of technique. Now coming to the technique the process uh, I will explain you with the help of a diagram. Uh, the process is like this there will be a dump box this is the box inside we keep the resin plus the sand. The sand and the resin is being put inside the resin and the sand is pre previously prepared and then it is being put inside the dump box. Then what we do is that the pattern is preheated the pattern or the replica of the final casting what you want its pattern is being preheated to 400 500 degrees Celsius and it has been clamped on the both side of the dump box. Then what we do is that we rotate this complete fixture in this manner you see this is being rotated. So because of which what happens is that this resin plus sand which was at the bottom side will now start covering this pattern like this it covers up like this. Then what we do is that we keep it for certain duration of time. And as you know that the pattern is been in a heated condition, what will happen is that this sand and resin will start sticking to this, will stick to this. And after that, again it is being rotated by uh, one again complete rotation. You will see that some amount of sand and resin has been deposited on this. So this is the third step. After that what you do is that you remove this uh, pattern and you keep it in the furnace for uh, increasing the temperature or it is also called as curing so that that a layer of sand which was, uh, has deposited on the pattern hardens up and then what you do is that you remove that shell which is being formed the pattern is being removed both are separated out and this is one part of your mold what you get. Similar process is to be done for the replica or one more such uh, mold and then they both have to be joined together using adhesive or some kind of clamping has to be done. So with the help of some kind of adhesives or clamping such two components are being joined together and it makes a structure like this. Now this structure will be acting as a mold on which you can put the uh, in which you can put the metal for pouring and get the final structure you will get the final structure. And finally you probably will be getting a structure like this. So you can see how much thin the section is over here plus here the thin sections are being produced only because of this type of technique called as the shell molding technique. I hope this process is clear to you all. The first step is to uh, create the dump box. Inside the dump box you put the sand plus resin and on that you put the pattern. The preheated pattern is being clamped. Then the complete fixture is being rotated so that the sand particles get deposited on the heated pattern. Then again it is being rotated. In that due course what happens is that the sand and the resin gets deposited on it. Then this whole structure or the only the pattern plus the shell is being kept inside the furnace for some time. And because of which what happens is that this shell gets hardened up then we can be able to separate out this pattern with the shell. Such one more process is being carried out to create one more replica of this. Both are joined together by using an adhesive or clamping and you get a final structure like this. This is ready for pouring and you get the metal structure like this. So this is the structure which is there in front of uh, uh, you. Now coming uh, the same thing what I have explained you uh, we will go ahead with some kind of some wording so that what I have told will be much clear to you all. The process consists of heating a metal pattern to 200 to 250 degrees Celsius. The first step you heat the pattern 200 to 250 degrees Celsius. Then the metal pattern is turned down and clamped over the open end of the dump box. So there will be a dump box on that you place that heated pattern. The dump box is previously filled with some sand and resin mixture. So that dump box is previously mixed with or filled up with some sand plus resin mixture. Then the dump box is inverted so that the sand and resin mixture contacts the heated pattern, softens and fuses forming a uniform shell on the surface of pattern. Heat first causes resin to become sticky and then gets hardened up. So initially what happens is that that resin what you have added to the sand will melt 
and then it will fuse together the sand and after some time that is uh, you expose it to some heat uh, for a longer duration of time it will make that whole shell more hardened so this is the usage or the reason why you make use of resin then the dump box is again turned over again as shown in the figure the dump box is uh, uh, moved to get removed to get the pattern and the shell for the pattern is removed such two shells are assembled together and it is ready for pouring it is ready for pouring so this is way how the shell molding process is being done basically you should remember that shell molding is being done because uh, to get very thin sectioned castings to get basically thin sectioned castings for example the fins of the blades or in other example would be your refrigerator valve in the refrigerator there is a valve on that there will be a cover i'll show you the image of that that cover is also a very thin section casting that also can be produced using this shell molding process only or shell molding root so this is the uh, image once again i'm showing this is the process and if you see the shell thicknesses uh, the the shell uh, thickness what is being formed depends upon two things that is the temperature of the pattern the first variable on which the thickness of the shell depends upon is inside the dump box you put the sand plus resin you allow it to solidify there there will be a thickness of the shell developed that thickness of the shell depends upon two things one is the temperature of the pattern you know that you have preheated it so to the higher temperature what you heat the pattern more will be the shell thickness it is depicted in this curve see as you increase the temperature you will see the shell thickness is also increasing and the second uh, parameter or the variable on which the shell thickness depends upon is the time duration for which you expose or keep in contact the sand with the heated pattern so that's why you see that as you uh, see the curve 5 seconds 10 seconds 20 seconds higher is the contact time higher will be the shell thickness so the shell thickness basically depends upon two things one is the temperature of the pattern and the other one is the time for which you make the sand and the pattern to be in contact with so this is the uh, graph and the one more example of a shell pattern method casting produced is over here i have taken this image from the pn rao textbook here this is the half part of the shell what you have obtained and the second half is over here both are being joined together with the help of adhesive or some kind of clamping will be used to join together both and then it is ready for pouring it the metal is being poured over here the metal gets settled down over here and you will get the final casting final casting is obtained so what are the advantages of this process what are the advantages of this process the advantages of this process basically i said you in the right uh, at the beginning of this topic is that if you want to create very thin sectioned castings you should go for this method okay so other advantages would be that uh, so here it is very thin sections like pins of the cylinder head can be made using this technique the first point the products are generally of good dimensional accuracy and uh, uh, accuracy the dimensional accuracy what you obtain out of this casting technique is very good if you make use of steel metal and the uh, method is shell casting technique then the tolerance level what you will be achieving will be around 0.25 in the positive direction that is plus 0.25 mm and if it is gray cast iron then you can get a tolerance level up to plus 0.35 mm that means what uh, tolerance or the dimensions you want from that plus 0.25 or plus 0.35 you can see that there, there is deviation in the dimensions of the final castings what you are achieving if you make use of this technique to produce the castings that is the advantage of this technique then smoother surface finish than the sand casting compared to the sand casting technique here in the shell molding technique the final casting will have a better surface finish and then small amount of sand is needed you can imagine in the case of sand casting you will require the complete flask to be filled with sand correct but here only a small amount of sand is being required which covers up your uh, pattern and that's why the amount of sand what is required is lesser over in this uh, type of casting uh, method but, but uh, you know that any uh, good technique will have or any good process will have its own advantages and drawbacks coming to the limitations of this technique is the limitations of this technique is that patterns are expensive and process becomes economical only when large quantity of productions are to be produced so uh, here if you want to make such type of patterns the patterns will cost you the cost is really higher side and if you want uh, if you want to produce only one or two numbers of castings then this is not the process for it you need to produce a large quantity of castings pieces of castings only then you should go for this route probably 15000 pieces if you want to make or more than that then you should go for this technique 
so uh, this technique is really uh, not good then if you, the number of pieces is lesser than 15000 pieces and applications if you see the applications are like this i have said earlier also the refrigerator wall plates in the inside the refrigerator there will be a valve and that valve will be covered up by a plate that plate is being made up of this technique only even the steel eyes which are used to lift the objects or lift the motor or big components are being made out of this technique only okay so uh, likewise there are applications for this uh, technique uh, i'll show you here the next uh, 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 slide here one more animated image i have taken from uh, the internet only so here you can see that this is the uh, mold or the pattern and while this is the this is the pattern while this is the dump box with the sand plus resin inside it is being rotated and then you get the shell like this here you can see that there is a shell shell such one more shell is being produced and you will get a final final mold like this when you pour the metal into it you will get the final casting like this you can see how much thin sectioned components you are able to make out of this technique so this is the advantage of this shell molding technique and this is the refrigerator valves cover what was i was talking about this is made out of this technique only these are some of the products which are being made out of this technique shell molding technique and i again ask you all to you may take the help of internet take the help of youtube videos to learn more about this technique called as a shell molding technique so you can see many of the videos related to this technique and understand it more betterly so these are the this is the first special molding technique what we have discussed till now so this is the shell molding uh, process the next one what we will be learning today will be called as the investment casting process this is the second special molding technique other than sand molding which is used in industries which is called as investment casting process okay investment casting process is also called as lost wax technique also because here the pattern is being made up of wax and that wax has to be melted and removed out of the process once you go for this type of process so this process is also called as investment casting process because here there is a huge amount of investment to be done in the form of making of dye in the making of machines in the making of or the usage of wax you might think that wax is very much cheap enough and why there is so much investment in it it is not the normal type of wax with what we use in our houses that is used in this technique that is a special grade of wax which is used and uh, that adds up to the cost so that is the why the name investment casting is being used over here and if you see this investment casting is known to our indian people since around 4000 to 3000 bc it seems before the death of christ so you might be knowing uh, the well famous natraj uh, statue the goddess of uh, uh, dance the goddess of dance natraja uh, statue if you see to that statue more properly and understand you will see that that statue cannot be made out of normal sand casting technique it is being made out of investment casting or lost wax technique only and this substantiates or this proves that our indian people knew about this casting process quite a long before uh, ago only or from a long period of time okay so that's why i have written that this process is also called as lost wax process and it was first used during the time period of 4000 to 3000 bc okay and the pattern here is made up of wax till now we have not come across any kind of sand or any type of casting technique wherein wax is being used as the pattern right i have explained you that the pattern can be made out of wood it is made up of metal it can be made up of plastic and sometimes even time made up of wax now this is a exclusive casting technique which is wherein the pattern is only made up of wax usually 90 percent of the investment casters make use of the wax and if you want to see the investment casting technique in belgam it is in mache uh, near vitu and there is a uh, company called trident steels which works upon this technique called as the investment casting technique so how this process is being done investment casting it is being in, uh, depicted in the form of this image this image i have taken from kalpak jain textbook so first what is being done here is that first of all the final casting what you want it's the same castings die you have to make out of metal so here a metallic die is being made and inside there is will be a cavity and inside that cavity you inject wax metal with pressure so that it and uh, gets into that uh, empty space 
and then what you do is that you allow that wax to solidify over there and after solidification you remove that wax pattern outside so this is the dye this is the wax what you are injecting inside with pressure and you allow it to solidify for some time and then you remove the wax pattern out of it then the second step is that you make such n number of wax patterns and then you create a gating system like this and attach such n number of uh, wax patterns to this gating system so there will be a gating system like this and then there will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 numerous n number of wax castings which you have produced from the dye and attach to it how do you attach to it you may you make use of adhesives or some other way by which you can just attach that n number of small castings what you have produced to the uh, to the tree or to the gating system then what you have to do is that you have to invert this whole tree or the gating system and you have to drip it into a slurry coating there will be a slurry coating this slurry coating is made up of ceramic material ceramic material like silica or zirconia such kind of materials are used in industries the whole pattern with n number of pat uh, small small patterns with the gating system is inverted and dipped into the slurry coating slurry uh, liquid for n number of times intermittently it is being dried up after each coating it is being dried up so that a coating is being produced outside that wax pattern such so 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, coatings are been given so that the complete wax pattern is being uh, covered up by the slurry after that what we do is that you can see this this both technique depicts that steps depict that after that what we do is that it is being inverted back and it is kept inside the furnace for curing for heating up so uh, the reason for doing this is that the water or the liquid content whatever is there uh, in that slurry coating on the pattern gets dried up and you end up with a, a very uh, thick and a very uh, strong slurry coating on that wax pattern after that what we do is that we take the complete set and subject it to autoclave means we put it inside the furnace wherein we raise the temperature of the surrounding to around 800,000 degrees celsius at that temperature what happens is that the uh, wax which was there inside will melt and come out will melt and come out and you have inverted it and kept so that all the wax with patterns which were there inside will come out uh, in the form of liquid then what you do is that you have a, a mold with cavity inside now you make use it for pouring the molten metal and once you have poured the molten metal you allow it to solidify for certain duration of time and then you shake it out means it's also called a spetling you shake it out and you get the final casting like this so this is the pattern and the final casting what you will be getting like would be like this this is called as the investment technique investment casting technique okay so uh, i think this is very much clear the first step is to create the pattern inside the metallic die wax pattern and such n number of wax patterns are being connected to the gating systems that is being given a number of slurry coatings allowed it to dry and after that it is being again put it into the furnace wherein the wax is being melted out of it so you basically end up with a slurry uh, ceramic um, uh, shell with a uh, with a cavity inside then you pour the metal uh, into it allow it to solidify settle it out means shake it out and get the final casting like this so many of the difficult structures what you are not able to get out of uh, sand casting technique can be made out of uh, investment casting technique okay we'll explain we'll go with that a little bit detail later now the same thing what i've explained to you is in the form of words the first step is the preparation of the pattern to do this molten wax is injected into the metallic die that is the figure number 1 or a the wax is allowed to solidify the pattern is then ejected from the die that is the second step the cluster of such patterns are attached to the gating system the third step then the figure step the second step is uh, the second step involved is the mold preparation to do this the prepared pattern is dipped into the slurry containing fine ceramic material the ceramic material are nothing but zirconia or the sand silica then what you do is that you allow it to solidify because of this there is a shell is being formed around the wax pattern okay the shell of the required thickness is cured in an oven after that the whole uh, pattern is being kept inside the furnace uh, and allow it to cure dried up and the next step is to remove the wax pattern from the shell which is done by heating the mold to melt the wax that is the uh, figure number uh, uh, figure number 7 and then the shell is now ready for metal pouring after that the shell will be ready for metal pouring so this is the steps in will uh, involved in the investment casting technique the same thing i have explained in the form of uh, 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 words also okay so 
if you see this is the technique called as the investment casting technique the same thing i have explained in the form of words and if you see the next slide the advantages of the process we will be discussing so coming to the advantages of the casting process is this that the very much complex kind of structures and intricate shape structures can be made out of this investment casting technique many of the examples uh, i will can place in front of you which are very difficult to produce out of the normal sand casting technique so for that we have to make use of this technique only called as a investment casting technique so the first point is that complex shapes where, where withdrawal of the pattern is difficult can be made out so many a times you see that the withdrawal of the pattern from the sand becomes very much difficult if it is having a structure like this uh, uh, under groove structure like this so removal of the pattern from the sand will become difficult once you try to remove the pattern some amount of sand will come out and there will be a cavity which uh, will be having some extra amount of dimensions and the final dimension would not be as what you require in such situations investment casting is being used then uh, very fine details and thin sections can be made okay good tolerance good surface finish can be obtained and no parting line so one of the uh, limitation of sand casting patterns is that you have a part, uh, part line and sometimes what happens is that the upper half of the uh, pattern and the lower half of the pattern don't match and because of which along the parting line because of which there is a mismatch casting defect produced mismatch cutting uh, casting defect produced which is not seen in this case that is the investment casting so these are the advantages while the limitations is that size is a basic limitation in this process so you can imagine that you are making a wax pattern and such n number of patterns are are expected to be connected to a gating system so you cannot expect that you have very large large castings being done and wax patterns being done and connected to the uh, uh gating or the uh, uh pattern uh, tree to the tree it's called as tree so it is very difficult to make big big wax patterns and attach it to it so what is being seen is that the maximum amount or the maximum weight of the wax pattern which can be made and attached to the uh, gating tree is just 5 kg not more than that that is the limitation so that can be taken up as a limitation of this technique and it is an expensive process because you are required to make of special kind of or special grade of wax even the dye you have to make you have to make use of special kind of machineries to do this kind of technique uh, you should have a furnace wherein you have to heat you have to melt out the wax all this will add up to the cost so it is a slightly expensive process so these are the advantages and drawbacks of this uh, process advantages is that basically wherever the complex intricate shaped structures are required to be made you go for investment casting technique good dimensional accuracy good surface finish and uh, no parting line is seen in this technique but the disadvantage is that that there is a maximum limit to which of the weight of the can produce out of this method and the second one is that uh, it is expensive because you have to make use of special machineries like special kind of wax special furnaces uh, machineries etc so these are the limitations what are the applications of this technique the applications of this technique is that you make use of investment casting to make surgical instruments like knives scissors scalpels all those things are being made out of this technique called as the investment casting the artifacts the artifacts are nothing but the uh, statues which are seen in the museums and all those are called as the artifacts so as i said the nataraja uh, uh, made out of this technique only so uh, artifacts is basically uh, produced out of this technique then jewelry the jewelry is what women wear and uh, are being used as a mo mode of fashion are being made out of this technique only so artifacts jewelry surgical instruments etc are being made out of uh, this technique called as a investment casting technique so next coming is uh, here is an example of how ca uh, investment casting is being done this is the pattern this is a plastic pattern however this uh, pattern uh, is made up of actually wax if you talk in investment casting technique such n number of patterns are being connected together to the gating system like this so this is the tree and such 1 2 3 4 Uh, patterns are being connected then it has been given a slurry coatings you can see this is the slurry coatings so it is given n number of slurry coatings are been given here i have not shown that n number of steps but only one and the second step final after the slurry coating being done is shown over here then it is being cured inside the furnace and you will get something like this then it is being put it inside the furnace so you can see here the heated wax coming out of it it is being discarded that wax cannot be used back 
okay so you will be left over with the ceramic coating with the cavity inside then pouring of metal is being done and then you get the final metal uh, uh, metal um, uh, solidified metal with the slurry coating on it like this it is being fettled means shaked out and you will get the final casting like this so you can see that this method this technique or this uh, casting is very difficult to be made out of sand casting technique because there is a groove over here there is a t slot over here t slot so making this out of uh, inverted t slot you can say inverted t slot so making this out of your normal sand casting technique is very difficult that's why we are going for this technique called as a investment casting technique and this is just an example for this uh, here you can see this as an example of investment casting technique such n number of parts are being made out of this you can see this so many n number of small 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 components are being made out of this technique called as the investment casting technique and this is the nataraja temple uh, goddess statue what is there in front of you an example of investment casting method used for making the uh, goddess idol idol and this also proves that indians knew about this technique so this is the one and then these are some of the components of the valve which is made out of the investment casting technique this is all the components which are made up of, of investment casting technique and all these components are of a valve only for example this is the body of the valve this is the uh, you know the disc which is there inside which flaps and the flow is controlled this is the disc inside while this is a ball valve or a globe valve this is a, again a normal ball valve which we use in our houses so all these are examples of the valves only so i have just put only one component valve and i want to show you that only a valve and number of components can be made up of investment casting technique such there are different uh, components in that different different uh, components can be again made out of this technique called as the investment casting technique so this is the second special type of uh, um, uh, sand casting technique what we have discussed today now coming to the third type of uh, important special type of um, uh, sand casting technique is nothing but our continuous casting continuous casting before that i go to the investment uh, continuous casting i would like to uh, give some brief description about important things so if you might have seen across this kind of structures these are called as the steel ingots these steel ingots conventionally are being made out of some kind of mold like this so you require a square kind of mold in which you pour the heated metal and you will get a steel ingots like this this is the conventional process of making this so for this what happens is that you might require a mold making of that mold is very much difficult maintaining that mold is difficult and slight variation in the sizes of the ingots you have to go and rework on the mold change its shape size probably make a new one which adds up to your cost this is the limitation of the conventional process in making this steel ingots now what we do is that to overcome this uh, limitation we go for this continuous casting technique this continuous casting technique came or was conceived in the year 1860s and now if you see and go to any steel production plant you will see that they make use of this technique to make use of the to make the steel ingots okay any steel plant if you go you will see that they make use of this cast continuous casting technique only to produce the steel ingots so how do they do in the uh, steel plant they melt the iron inside the blast furnace after that they pour it in, uh, pour it inside a, a ladle that ladle is being poured down into a special type of technique called as a continuous casting which we'll be learning now and you will get the uh, ingots steel ingots okay so this is what i have written making a, an ingot through conventional technique is an uneconomical and time consuming process so normally if you want to make a steel ingot it takes huge amount of time and cost because you basically have to make a mold hence a newer technique called as continuous casting is employed to obtain steel ingots and it was conceived in 1980s and now used for steel productions for steel production if you uh, happen to visit any steel plant for example uh, jsw in torangulu you can probably see, see this type of technique called as the continuous casting technique how it is being done it will be a huge process actually this uh, continuous casting technique is not a casting technique it is a method of producing steel in industries so the output from the furnace of a steel plant that is the uh, the place from which steel is being produced liquid form it is being poured inside a uh, open mold and that uh, liquid metal will get solidified continuously to form a steel uh, bar slab other things right so i will explain you that in the next slide so see here 
So this is the slide which will explain you what is this continuous casting process. So you can see that there is an electric furnace. From the electric furnace, electric furnace, a furnace wherein where you melt the metal. So that's called as a furnace. So that you melt the metal and you put it inside the tundish. This is the tundish. The tundish is will not. The tundish is a kind of vessel in which you put the metal and you remove the uh, oxide layer or the impurities. You skim it off from the top layer of that uh, liquid metal. So that vessel is called as a tundish. You shouldn't be in a uh, you know uh, idea that the tundish is very small vessel. You can hold up till three tons of uh, liquid metal into that tundish. So that tundish will be there. From that tundish, the liquid metal will be poured here inside this green color mold. This green color mold is usually made up of copper, and it is being liquid cooled. You can see that this mold is being liquid cooled. So this metal, what is being poured inside, it is being continuously solidified inside this copper mold, which is again water cooled. And you will see that the uh, the steel component is coming out in this fashion. And there will be pinch rolls over here. Which will make or constrict the dimensions of that steel bar. What is coming down? That it shouldn't go away from the dimensions what is required. For that, we make use of this pinch rolls. And once it comes over here, you make use of a kind of special kind of torch, oxygen torch, which will cut this metal and uh, integrate or integrated uh, metal bars will come out. So this is the technique of your continuous casting process. Here, uh, you should remember that. Before once before we start the process, you make use of a uh, starting dummy box. There will be a dummy uh, 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 dummy box which is being used to start the technique. What they do is that this uh, dummy box is being kept over here initially before the start of the process. The liquid metal is being poured on it, and once that required amount of height is being re reached, slowly this dummy box is being withdrawn withdrawn in this fashion. The rate of withdrawal of this dummy bar will be the rate at which will be equal to the rate at which the liquid metal is being poured over here. So both the rates will be matched. The rate at which the liquid metal is being poured and the rate at which that dummy bar is being withdrawn through that continuous casting mold. So because of this, what will happen is that continuity will be maintained. And once that is being done, once that mold is being removed out, you will get a continuous metal uh, part coming out of this. This is continuous casting technique, which is usually used in the steel plants to get uh, billets. So the same thing I have written on the board. The molten metal from the electric furnace is poured uh, into a tundish where impurities are skimmed off. The tundish is being used to remove or skim off the impurities. The tundish can hold three tons of metal. So you shouldn't think that tundish is a small vessel, and uh, uh, it is not so the case. Three tons of liquid metal can be uh, held in it. The molten metal flows downwards through copper mold, which is water cooled and begins to solidify into a path. So what happens is that that copper uh, mold is being used, which is again water cooled. Okay, before starting the casting uh, process, a solid starter bar is used. That I have explained you. The molten metal first freezes onto the dummy bar. That dummy bar is being used so that the first initial part of the metal comes and pours on it and gets solidified, and slowly the dummy bar is being withdrawn and At a rate which is equal to the metal pouring rate. Okay, the dummy bar is then withdrawn at the same rate at which the metal is being poured. Additional cooling is provided by water sprays along the travel path. Along the travel path, I have just not shown you the water cooling. A series of water cooling can be used to cool that uh, metal solid bar what is coming out of that mold. Typically, the solidified metal descends at a speed of 25 mm per second. So per second, 25 mm of steel component will be produced down. Right. The slab bars of the desired length is cut using a torch. So at the below bottom, I have shown you a torch. That torch is being used to cut that metal wherever you want and get the in independent amount of bars. Further, the slabs or the bars are subjected to cleaning, cold rolling, annealing, coating. So further processing are being done later. So this is the uh, continuous casting process. This image will be more clear to you all, I hope. So here you can see that at the top section, the metal is being poured. That is the tundish, that big. Uh, cylindrical vessel is the tundish. The metal is being brought down. These are the rollers on which the metal is being brought over here. There is a roller over here to change the dimensions of the workpiece or the uh, solidified metal. And here it is being cut. See here there is a cutting mechanism to cut this metal part. And independent small small slabs of metals will be coming out. The same thing is being shown over here. 
you shouldn't think that only one continuous casting is being used likewise here one two three four continuous casting molds are being used and each of the cases it is being cut and the output of this uh, technique would be something like this a slab or a bars or the ingots what you can say so this is a continuous casting technique so here i stop down my uh, discussion uh, in the next class tomorrow's class i'll be explaining you about the uh, next type of uh, sand casting techniques so as such there is still time available okay still time is available so uh, as you know that uh, in today's class we have completed up to yes we have completed to this uh, shell molding so shell molding is being done shell molding is basically being done to get the very thin sectioned castings investment castings also we have covered up investment we make in this and investment castings are also being produced to produce very intricate and complex shaped components we have seen today how uh, the mechanism and the working of continuous casting continuous casting is being done to basically in the steel industries to get steel billets or the steel bars so these are the three things what we have covered in today's class in tomorrow's class we will be completing or covering up with this uh, uh, gravity die casting pressure die casting and centrifugal casting and then we have we will be discussing about this uh, melting furnaces in the next class so i am uh, saturday's class so like this we will be completing with the portion of the third unit okay thank you